Hey yo everybody, Buckeye Monkey here. And I am coming back at you with some more Kerbal Space Program Insanity. So for those of you that watched my first video, you know that I landed on the moon and came back to Kerbin uh, using a rocket that I created using nothing more than the original five or six starting pieces that you get in career mode. If you haven't watched my first video, then I hate you. Uh, no, just kidding, I don't hate you. I love you. I love you all. So this time around, what we are going to try to do is, under the same restrictions, you know, the very first mission in career mode, just those starting five or six pieces that you get, uh, we are going to try to get to Duna, land on Duna, grab a sample, and bring that sample back to Kirby. Now, this is not my, air quotes, official career mode game save. Uh, the only reason for it to exist is this mission to Duna. So I'm not really going to be doing any science here, I'm not going to be doing any EBAs or transmitting crew reports. Uh, I didn't even put an antenna on my ship because I don't really care about the science here. I just care about getting to Duna and back. And you may have noticed the footage you've been watching so far uh, is a lot of ships exploding. I decided to go ahead and show you uh, just a small fraction of the parade of fail that I went through trying to build a craft that could get enough Delta V into orbit to accomplish this mission. Uh, it took a lot of iterations. There were a lot of explosions. And I mean a lot. Like many, many failures. But eventually, I cracked the code, found the right combination, and here she is. Isn't she a beauty? So for good luck, I brewed myself some Earl Grey tea, uh, channeled a little Jean-Luc Picard, and yelled, ENGAGE! So basically, some of the tricks I used here with just these starting pieces is it's pretty easy to intentionally get the boosters to overheat and explode, and you can kind of use that uh, to simulate staging. And also, I had to be meticulous uh, with my placement on all of these pieces. Uh, I needed to make sure that the uh, very bottom level was all exactly the same so that when the ship loads up on the launch pad, the stress gets uh, equally distributed between that bottom level. Um, without that, the uh, you could get parts falling off, and that is no bueno. So in addition to the boosters on the outside that you can see firing, I actually have some more boosters in the core firing as well. And that's kind of important because without any struts, uh, I need to balance the forces that are going on here. Otherwise, the ship will tear herself apart. In my last video, I wasn't able to actually show the launch starting from the launch pad, but this time around I, I tweaked my KSP settings a little bit. Uh, and I think my part count is actually a little bit lower, even though I'm getting more Delta V into orbit. Uh, so you can witness the entire flight in all of its glory. And as before, I will have the a link to the craft file in the uh, YouTube description here, so you can download this beast and attempt to fly her yourself. Um, this is a successful launch that I'm showing you here. Even though we do get a little bit wobbly and off-centered, we're able to recover from that. But, uh, I gotta tell you, if you try to fly this yourself, you m it's not guaranteed to always work. Uh, you're, you're, you might explode a few times. Now, when you're trying to explode a booster stage using more boosters, uh, the timing's pretty easy because they overheat really quickly. But coming up here, we are going to explode this last booster stage with uh, rocket engines and you need to you need to hit the button a little bit earlier there uh, the rocket engines don't put out quite as much heat as the boosters do um, so you need to hit the button a little you know a little quicker to get those things to explode away and now that we're done with our booster stages um, the ship is more controllable uh, and I'm trying to ever so gently nudge her over into something resembling a gravity turn uh, so I can start getting that sideways velocity that is so, so important uh, with getting into orbit. You know, one of the things that uh, Kerbal Space Program kind of teaches you about spaceflight is that 
it's not so much about going up. Um, you know, obviously you have to go up to get out of the atmosphere and away from the planet. But achieving orbit is really more about going sideways really, really fast. You may have noticed some video artifacts going on here on your screen, and the reason is that, uh, especially when I'm stressing the Kerbal Space Program engine to the max, and, and my frame rate's really low, uh, my video capture software produces a variable frame rate video. And when I import that into Adobe Premiere, which is what I use for the editing, uh, the audio will desync. So I need to re-encode the video before I import uh, to smooth out the frame rate, and unfortunately that is introducing some artifacts. Now, coming up here is the hardest stage to time. I need to explode these boosters uh, and get rid of the current stage quickly enough so that uh, the stage isn't dead and weighing me down. But if I do it too quickly, then the last stage will still have fuel and it'll actually go faster than my the rest of my ship and they'll run into each other and explode. Uh, and here I get decent timing on it, decent uh, separation. I don't explode myself, um, and yet I didn't weigh myself down too long and lose too much velocity. But I gotta tell you, with uh, all the iterations I went through, um, getting to this point and failing and hitting the button at the wrong time is pretty damn disheartening. So with my previous ship that I went to the moon with, at this point um, I was on my very last stage and I had to use quite a bit of fuel from my final stage vehicle uh, just to achieve or orbit around Kerbin. But as you can see, uh, I still haven't gotten to that point yet. And my final stage actually does have one more fuel tank than I did before. Um, so with this design, as compared to the last one, I have been able to get significantly more Delta V into orbit uh, with a vehicle that only explodes like 50% of the time. So at this point I whipped my team of video editors to get them to speed up this video so uh, you don't have to sit through the boring parts quite as much. Um, and here I am circularizing my orbit uh, and then plotting a course to Duna. You know, plotting this course kind of takes a long time. Sometimes these maneuver nodes and target markers and uh, encounters can be pretty finicky. It seems like uh, you can be tweaking things a little bit and getting closer and getting closer and then all of a sudden your target markers go poof or your encounter just disappears uh, and you have to backtrack a little bit and start over again and just keep playing with it until you get it right. And the more astute KSP players among you may have noticed that um, we are in a decent alignment with Duna for a planetary transfer, which is not how the game starts out. Uh, I stuck Bill in a capsule on the launch pad uh, to get some time acceleration going so that I could get to this point. You know, it may seem cruel to have left Bill sitting out there for so long, but uh, Bill's not really a team player. Uh, he never seems happy with what's going on, uh, so you know what? Screw Bill. I say he deserved his time in the penalty box. So here we are making a couple uh, adjustments to get our peri apps in our encounter a little closer to Duna so that when we do get there um, we have to spend very little fuel making sure that we enter Duna's atmosphere at the correct height. You know the further out you are when you make your adjustments uh, the more fuel efficient it is but the toucher it can be you know just a little bit of delta v here and there can make a big difference so you have to be real careful with uh how you make your little tiny burns there another thing you want to be careful of is crossing that encounter barrier under time acceleration because if you do uh, sometimes the physics engine gets a little wonky and it messes up your trajectory so here i am in my duna encounter uh, originally I was on a crash course, so I needed to make a couple slight adjustments to get my Duna periaps up to about 11,000 meters, uh, maybe 12, um, so I could do some arrow braking and get captured in orbit around Duna. And here we are in our arrow braking maneuver, which hit that sweet spot in between flying off into deep space and crashing right into the planet. And shortly thereafter, uh, I hit a quick save, and it's a good thing that I did because I ended up needing it. When I was making my adjustments to prevent my original course that was uh, crashing into Duna, I probably should have aimed at the other side of the planet. Um, I ended up putting my periaps on the dark side, which ended up bringing me down on the dark side of the planet when I finally did deorbit. 
Now, despite having five parachutes on this thing, uh, it doesn't bring my um, velocity down quite enough for a gentle landing, so I do need to burn the engine a little bit right before I hit the ground. And unfortunately, on the dark side, uh, with no shadow, uh, it's really hard to judge just how far away the ground is. So my uh, engine ended up breaking off a couple times. But never fear, with the magic of quick saves, we are able to try and try again. And the fourth time ended up being the charm on this one. There we have our friend Ike rising up over the horizon of Duna as we come down for our final attempt. Here you can see the difficulty with all my settings turned down, and on the dark side, Duna is just a big red blob. But we are finally able to touch down gently enough so that everything holds together. You know, I could have maybe used some struts to create some landing gear, but then I wouldn't be able to EVA and plant a flag on Duna and actually get back into my capsule. So I had to go with the highly sophisticated land and fall over technique. There is Ike in the background silently judging our playstyle. So now it's time to EVA and uh... Well, not quite. I accidentally hit the button again. And get some boots down on the red planet. Now well, let's mosey on over a little bit to plant our flag decently far away so that we don't knock it over when we're attempting to get back up off the surface. So let's uh, set down our Buckeye Monkey colors and claim Duna for all monkey kind. This is uh, Duna Landing 1. And uh, for our plaque text, yeah, we did it! All right! Now, um, if only we could get home. Ah, uh, what am I worried about? We've got Jeb at the controls. Of course we're going to make it. And lest we forget, the, our entire purpose from being here is to bring back some of this strange red soil to Kerbin so we can analyze it. Now let's waddle back to our sturdy craft over here. You know, Duna's got enough gravity we can actually run a little bit. And let's repack our parachutes. Uh, it would be quite a shame to make it all the way out here, make it all the way back home, only to find ourselves victim to fiery death because we forgot to reset the parachutes for our re-entry on Kerbin. You know, you might ask yourself why the Kerbals invented rocketry before they invented things like uh, landing gear or ladders. But, you know, you might as well also ask why they built a space center before they built any cities or roads, or apparently invented agriculture, for that matter. You know, they just might be the only intelligent species in the galaxy to build a space program while they were still a hunter-gatherer society. And our time here on Duna was fun, but, um, you know, all of the uh, Kerbal movies about Duna seem to end in scary, scary death for the Kerbal Dots involved, so let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> of course you didn't think we were going to be able to take off on our first try now, did you? So, you know, we suffer through a couple more explosions, but then we finally get back up off the surface. And at this point, kind of say to hell with maneuver nodes and take a little unorthodox approach to getting back into orbit. You know, one little burn near our Apple apps there, catch up a little bit more, and then another burn, and finally we've achieved a Duna orbit. Time to go ahead and plot our course back home to Kerbin. Now, in this fairly low orbit around Duna, we can't speed up our time acceleration all the way to the max and really wait for a, a perfect planetary alignment to get back to Kermit. So we're just going to go ahead and burn right away and get ourselves into an orbit that touches Kerbin's, and then we're going to have to just wait and orbit around the sun a few times until we get to a decent encounter that we can work with uh, and modify our trajectory to go ahead and, and hit Kerbin. Luckily, we got ourselves in a situation where I only really need to go around the sun about three times until we got to a point where we could uh, adjust our trajectory and get ourselves an encounter with Kerbin. So that's what we're doing here, playing around with this maneuver node, trying to finesse it just a little bit uh, to get our periaps as close as possible. Because our fuel is getting quite low, uh, we don't really have any to spare. 
and we want to be careful with our burns this far out because a little delta V goes a long way. We also want to make sure that as we cross into our encounter in Kerman, we've turned off our time acceleration so that we don't mess up the trajectory that we placed ourselves on. And after a little bit of tweaking, we get ourselves in a nice trajectory for an arrow breaking capture around Kerman. Jeb looking ecstatic that he is on his way home. And zoom on in to curb. Use that nice thick atmosphere to our advantage to get ourselves in orbit. Although, you know, this is what happens when you don't use a arrow breaking calculator. Sometimes you're a little bit off. Uh, I could have been a lot closer. A second time through the atmosphere brings me in a little bit closer. And uh, hopefully the next time around we should be coming back home. To make sure we do in our apoapsis, we throw out a quick little burn there, bring in our periapsis a little bit. So this time the uh, drag should be enough to bring us back down to the surface. Might as well throw out a little burn there, use up what fuel we have left to slow us down a little bit, and uh, manually deploy our chutes so that they can slow us down the rest of the way and bring us down for a nice gentle landing right after our full chute deployment coming up right here. Which brings us down to a perfectly acceptable uh, about 6 meters per second. Which should mean no explosions on the landing. And there we go. We lost our rocket, but we don't really need that anymore. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, I am not done making videos, so if you like this one, please hit that subscribe button and fly safe. But uh, not too safe. Let's keep it real out there.